tragic story, isn't it? So this is courtesy of Good Morning. Is this yeah, Good Morning America? So I'm sure most of you are aware of this tragic, tragic story that happened. I think a couple of days ago, where an Uber Eats driver was unfortunately um, killed in the process of being carjacked. Um, it was like a really odd thing where these two young girls um, were visiting from out of town or something. I read um, they taser the driver of the uh, of the Uber Eats car. Um, they get involved in a tussle. Somehow the girls slip into the car. Um, the Uber Eats driver tries to hang on to get his car back. They speed around the corner. And then from that moment on, something happens where the car flips to its side. The driver gets flung, you know, off from the door. He looks like he hits a gate somewhere and essentially dies on the scene. And the two young ladies who carjacked the car try to run off. But bystanders kind of stop them. And you, you kind of, I think you overhear one of the girls as the guy is lying motionless on the floor. He's basically, she's basically saying, "Oh, my phone's in my phone, my phone." And it's just so macabre, right? This guy is essentially lifeless on the floor, right? He's complete. His life has been completely taken from him in a very senseless act of violence. Um, and they're more worried about their smartphone. It's really, really tragic. But I'll play the video for you guys now, just so you can have an idea of what I'm talking about, and then I'll give you my other opinion on the other side. Ba -ba -ba to that horrific story out of D.C., a carjacking that left a delivery driver there dead. But now two teenage girls, ages 15 and 13, have been charged God with damn. assaulting him with a stun gun, leading to the crash that killed him. A lot of questions being asked now, including if services like Uber Eats need to do more to protect drivers. Our Ariel Reshef joins us now with the very latest. Good morning, Ariel. Good morning to you, TJ. That deadly attack on a 66-year-old Uber Eats driver happened in broad daylight, 4.30 p.m. as he was trying to deliver food. Those two teen suspects arrested in a shocking and senseless crime. This morning, two teenage girls arrested, charged with felony murder and armed carjacking Madness. after police say they violently attacked and killed an Uber Eats driver in Washington, D.C. Police say the suspects, just 13 and 15 years old, were in the process of trying to steal 66-year-old Mohammed Anwar's car when one of them used a taser on him as they tried to speed off, which police say led to the deadly car crash. The car flipping over. Anwar ejected. He was rushed to the hospital with life-threatening injuries but did not survive. The teens arrested at the scene. Anwar's loved ones calling the sudden loss immeasurable, telling ABC News the father of three and grandfather of four moved to the U.S. from Pakistan in 2014 Jesus to build Christ. a better life for himself and his family. It's more, more than tragic. I don't even know if that, that word um, describes what happened. It's senseless. Police say they've seen a spike in carjackings in Washington, D.C. and in several other major cities since the pandemic began. In 2020, 345 carjackings were reported in the nation's capital, more than double the year before. The city launching a task force just last month to help focus on these incidents. Because it's very important uh, that we find out the people who are responsible for, for these carjackings uh, and that, that, that we have justice. Uber driver. Crazy, isn't it, right? Absolutely crazy, man. And this definitely is a symptom um, of the pandemic, of course. It definitely is. We definitely have to kind of consider that. The fact that people have been locked indoors for, you know, a, a prolonged period of time. The fact that people's earning potentials are completely drastically, you know, diminished in some respects. Um, I, I would imagine even the fact that if, even if you were a criminal, I think the possibility for you to conduct crime in any sort of kind of, you know, meaningful, ma meaningful manner, if you can say it that way, is probably been diminished somewhat too because everyone's at home. So it kind of limits your opportunities to conduct any sort of criminal activity. Um, of course, police forces are now being told to stand off and not you know essentially arrest people when it comes to petty sort of crime quote unquote and it's just led to this kind of really um horrendous situation that we're in now at the moment where two teenagers right barely 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 teenagers are now completely ruined their entire lives through this one senseless act of kind of selfishness um an entire family has been robbed of their grandfather and somebody that was kind of you know essentially a big part of their family and now everyone's left scratching their heads. And the funny thing for me, the odd thing as well, is this kind of conversation around Uber Eats. It's not really an Uber Eats discussion. It's more so a discussion about how we as a society are looking at kind of transitioning or kind of stepping out from the lockdown. 
What are the things that we're going to put into place to prevent these situations from arising? Why are two teenage girls even thinking that this is a uh, this is a kind of advantageous way for them to kind of i don't know um get a little bit of excitement in their life or to essentially maybe make some money why is this the only option that they feel is on the table why is maybe as there's an option on the table for somebody like an anwar the, the 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 gentleman that passed away why does he only have to do a job like that let's kind of open up the conversation and really figure out ways that we can kind of get to a place where these sort of situations don't need to transpire and again, I don't think it's an Uber Eats thing. I think Uber Eats are providing people with the ability to, you know, uh, provide for themselves and for their family, especially during this tough time. I, I would imagine being an Uber Eats driver or delivery driver, wherever else it may be, the demand is probably super high. Um, they're probably inundated with applications, people that want to actually go out there and represent their brand and deliver food or take people from A to B. And people are willing to jump in your car during this time as well. There's loads of things out there with this sort of thing, but it's just distressing to see this sort of happening to a guy who's just minding his own business and it really wasn't hurting anybody and now essentially he's been taken away from his family through just one senseless act uh of criminality that you know really has kind of destroyed three people's lives and the two girls obviously the family of the victim like nobody wins from this absolutely devastating but i do think the conversation around uber east is a bit short-sighted this is a definitely a societal issue that needs to be addressed at the highest levels of office um it needs to really get in you know really need to get down the weeds with it it's less about uber east and more so societal that's just my opinion on that one